Hi, welcome to my talk, Win Strategy Using Machine Learning. So I will be covering the principles of Win Strategy, how it's been currently done, and how we can explore the all new world of bots, machine learning, artificial intelligence to help us succeed in our must win bits. So let's get into the topic and let's open up the new world of machines in our win strategy. See you inside. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Basti here. Welcome to Winning Business Virtual Experience. I hope you guys are enjoying APMP's largest gathering of bid and proposal community in the whole world. So in my talk, we will be covering win strategy, not just win strategy principles, but we will be covering win strategy using machine learning. So I am Baska Sundram, founder, director of Batch Scribble, one of the APMP's approved training organization. Uh, hope you and your family, loved ones are okay in these testing times. Before we get into this topic, I thought I'd land that. So let's get it into the topic. So what is win strategy? A win strategy is often used to describe the actions. It's not just intelligence, it's the actions that's going to require for you to help to win your opportunity. The action that you need to take to win an opportunity. Capture strategy, win strategy, hand on hand. What are the terminology that you use? Use it. But what is win strategy? Win strategy is a combination of your opportunity, the client and the company. You need to know all three moving parts to frame your win strategy, which we will dive deeper as we progress into the slide. So, as Sun Tzu, the Chinese bottom expert said, know your enemy and know yourself. Know your enemy, know yourself even before you get to your war. So, with that principle, let's move into the three components that we touched. The very first one is about the opportunity. What do you need to know for the opportunity? Number one, I need to know what is the opportunity. What is the name of the opportunity? And second one is what is the need for the opportunity? And third one is the scope behind opportunity. This could be very similar, but not the case. The title of the opportunity, why they are coming out for the tender, and what are the components of the tender? Remember, your win strategy, capture strategy happens advanced to your proposal thing. It's not just you have a tender document in hand, you have to assume, you have to gather enough intelligence about the opportunity. Now, we have the opportunity in hand. Next, we look into the client, right? Why the client is doing this? Number one, who are the clients? You can bucket them into multiple names. Stakeholders, the key stakeholders who are going to do, who are going to review the standards. Number two, the influencers, the people who are giving these inputs to those key stakeholders. Finally, the budget owners or the key decision makers. At last, you also need to understand how the selection will be made. Reminding you again, we are not on the proposal stage. So you know the opportunity, the what is the opportunity, what is the need for the opportunity, the scope for the opportunity, and you also look into the stakeholders in the opportunity so moving on what's next next is the important one the competition and the company hand on hand you know the client you know the opportunity and now you're going to look into how what that means to you as a company and your competition at the same time so understand who are the competitors who has done this tender in the past if they haven't already done it now so it's a new tender, old tender. You might get a feel for the relevant suppliers who are going to go for this tender. Number two, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the competition? How do you know that? You might know their presence in the, in the, in the region. You might know the technical expertise. You might know their bid and sales capability. Remember, every sector, there is always four or five key main suppliers. It's a small industry in every single sector. Understand your competition, the strengths and weaknesses key even before you decide to pursue opportunity, especially if the competition is the incumbent. 
clearly, clearly, clearly important. Next, you then understand your strengths and weakness of your own company. Do you have presence? Do you have the technical expertise? Can you bid it effectively? Do you have the right team? And even if you bid it, do you have the right contractual structure to deliver this opportunity? Your competition will have the same as you, provided who puts lot in this particular deal might have a say. Strengths and weaknesses of yourself, strengths and weakness of your company. And finally, your company's differentiator. So you have the opportunity, you have the client information, the stakeholders, and you compare end to end with these guys. You have you, the, the terminology that we use, you know, beta comparison matrix and other things. But for now, let's not get into those little technical concepts. Let's focus on high level win strategy. What that means is there is a lot of information that you need to keep in mind, right? And the information keeps moving. The information about the client's needs, the information about your competition, information about your own company changes pretty much frequently. Not by the day, could be, but by a week. You might win a new tender that might give you more capability. You might sign a new partner. Your supply chain is becoming bigger. You might have a new sales director who has much more experience on this particular tender. Your competition might face the same. Information will never stop, but intelligence gathering at some point needs to be converted into actions and needs to be transformed into the statements. Some of these, you might be familiar with this. Once you gather the information, what do you do? You emphasize your strengths, you mitigate your weakness, then you highlight your competitor's weakness and you downplay your competitor's strengths, right? So, but as I mentioned, the information keeps moving. Keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Next, now you have collected the information you are then converting that information into relevant insights. You can use thought leaderships, you can use white papers, presentations, webinars, events, you name it, and demonstration, media buys, anything, because your, your customer or, or your market needs to know you are well placed to take this tender. You're already preparing for this tender. You're actually giving the signals to the market and your buyers that you are the one. You are the one, remember that. Now, at some point, your proposal will be landing, and when the proposal lands, you convey those signals into charts, images, written papers, etc., etc. Either way, point here is this, guys. Win strategy is not just collecting intelligence. It's about the actions we take, not the attributes or information that we gather. So with that in mind, Let's move into the next one, which is, okay, I have got all this information. What am I going to do next? Right? You then collectively bring in, you know, sometimes it's a one man big person. Good luck to you if you are that person. But if you're not, obviously you will have a capture person, ideally in the States or in UK, a marketing person or anywhere else, pre-sales, sales, you name it in, in other geographies. So work together, gather the intelligence, and we collectively do the same thing. You bring the facts, you take the perceptions and the emotions where possible while you're doing it, then you build the visions and the strategy of why they are doing what they're doing, gradually come out with some templates, and you build it. We already touched this. You have your influence, your acquisition strategy. Then you build up the content. Then you convert them into proposal themes. Statements. So your intelligence get gradually converted into proposal theme statements. But what did I tell you? Information keeps moving. So we just need to know the key five steps before we even dwell deeper into how we can control or how we can manage the win strategy as a whole. Step one, you know, your win strategy team, even if it's one person, two person, set them up, give them dedicated information. Here we go. You are the person. It could be a proposal manager, pretend there hasn't come. He or she is already working to collect the intelligence or it's a dedicated person or a team, your marketing team, your capture team, your capture lead, whoever is it, they are there. Allocate them one dedicated person. What he or she does keeps an eye on the market. Next one, collecting information about their customer and competition. Uh, it's a recurring thing. It keeps on happening. It's a cycle. Collect this. Then you develop at least five key stories. Five key stories about why you are better and why your competition is not great or why you are the best solution for your customer. Keep adding it. 
develop and assign action steps. I'll collect the information. Guys, we might need to have presence in this region. Do we have any contracts or any reference points there? Guys, we might need a technical supplier. Our supply chain needs to be beefed up. Our innovation requires us to do bigger and better things. You are framing up those actions. Guys, we might need to have more support from the team. Anything and everything. From then on, you then lift and drop into your proposal. It's the same thing, but done in five steps, and that's recurring. It keeps moving, moving, moving. Check in your organization. How is being done? Are you jumping straight here? Or most time, what happens? You collect the information as much as you can on a kickoff meeting, do a SWOT analysis, then you jump into writing the proposals. So, how often do you refresh this? How is it being reflected and dropped in your proposal? That's the deciding factor in your success in your bit. So, from then on, remember this diagram. So, we are here, right? You are already in the proposal zone, or you are three, four months into proposals. You have tons and tons of information that's been thrown at you about what the customer wants, what do you think you can do, and what do you think your competition is going to do? Understanding the why behind the what, uncovering actionable insights, converting them, and ensuring competition doesn't do. But what happens generally? We are busy in finding responses to our own tender documents, and we overlook the intelligence. Intelligence might get outdated. But what can we do then if you have a machine or someone, not just a person, something that can become that little spider in the wall that can keep on tracking these three moments for you so that you can put your heads into the proposal and you can look into this machine and the machine feeds the information. Let it sink it through, let it sink it through. So with that thought, how can machine intelligence shape the things? In so many ways, number one, you can use it to track how your competition and your customer is doing. Number two, you will ensure that you will never miss an announcement, right? Never miss an announcement from the industry or competition. Next one is, if there is a negative press just about you or about your customers or about your competition, you can actively manage and react to it. It's hard work for a human to keep on track of these multiple sources, but if you know where the information is, then we can look into those information, right? Let it sink it through. Next one, right? You as a company have a brand. That's the perception of who you are. Remember the thought leadership, the webinars, the events, the white papers and stuff that you're doing? How effective is it? How can we optimize it? Number two, how can we look into the pricing intelligence? Similar tender that's been outsourced, what was the budget? What was the projects that's been happening in the other geographies in the same areas? What if you find the sources and you connect it to the spider and the spider keeps tracking for you so that you can put your heads down on your beds. Remember, your intelligence keeps moving when you're working. Then you have your personalized products. You can customize it. Then you look into the overall product life cycle, your bid life cycle, your own brand perception, as I talked about. Then you can also customize to your competition. These are concepts. These are concepts. But I just want you to think in, this is what's happening now. This might be happening soon. So let's see. Let's, what are the information that's in front of you, right? Imagine the post that you are posting. Hey, I, we have won this new deal. It's been a long, hard deal, but I have won the deal. You will see all the time in LinkedIn. You will see all the time companies posting about it. You will see a lot of strategy reports. Imagine the tons of information that's floating around, not just on the websites, not just on the websites, but in the news, in the products, in the social media, and the content that's been shared in multiple platforms, or images, videos, and what's being talked in the market, what's being discussed in the forums like Reddit, and what's being discussed outside your control. 
if you can pull this information together not manually but if you know exactly where the sources are these are the three competition these are the three key PR sites that they want to monitor these are the customer related information this is their supply chain etc you set it and you tell the machine to hey you know what anything that comes from here customize and do it is it a simple Google search no now semantic searches are much more advanced so you could put a keyword you could put a supplier and a keyword then you could get all the resources not just from the websites but over all here for some time I just want to move away from your proposal hat get into the new world of information collection how powerful is it if we move this so what do you think will happen let's imagine what do you think will happen you have collecting an information and this collecting information as I mentioned from Twitter from Facebook from Instagram then it gets cleansed, validated, processed. Then that information gets fed in the cognitive mind because if, as the more and more the machine understands what type of information is rating up, you know, a new merger has happened. That information creates a lot of likes, a lot of posts. People are talking about it automatically comes up. Machine learns, information comes and then it get discovered and it comes to you so a three step collect cognitive process then you discover please stay with me because you need to be aware of this the world is changing around you thought will share that to you so you can be prepared for your tender process in the next three years imagine we are already in a new covid environment so what happens an ai basement strategy tool improves it definitely improves it helps you to monitor. It also uses information based on publicly available information. Finally, it also going to not just save the time that your capture team and the marketing team is going to do, but become a trusted partner in doing the intelligence work. Is it, uh, my question to you is this. Do you currently gather any information? Is capture can still be as a service? Can capture be a product? Can a bot be your capture manager? I just want to let it sink in your mind in this talk. So, when strategy, the amount of information that you're going to collect, the actions that you're going to take to win a bid, why can't we use machine learning principles that provides us into the support proposal automation? Been there for 20 odd years now is it time to move into capture automation so no is it already there maybe is it gonna come soon I think so the whole world is different so that's what I just thought I would share that in this principle so either way regardless of what you do this is what you're going to do as I mentioned is it time that we look into machine learning intelligence for not just one-off intelligence but dynamic real-time intelligence that's going to come. Remember, this is not your RSS feeds or your generic Google search. It's much more advanced. It's already there, but how often or do we use in our environment to understand an offer that helps you to win, that satisfies the customer needs, and it neutralizes your competitor's offering. And if you have the power of AI, how would you approach your tender? Do you approach it differently to know what your customer wants, what we have to offer, and the competitive environment? That's a little bite-sized learning I just want to cover in this win strategy using machine learning. So with that thought, I will end this talk. If you have any questions, please do let me know. But until then, it's Bhaskar Sundram signing off. Try to imagine the world of machines sitting next to you while you're working from home because the interaction between human to human is going to go slow. Unfortunate, but that's the world we are in. But let's see how we can use it to our advantage. Lots of love. Look after yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye. It's Bhaskar Sundram signing off.
So thank you so much for tuning in to my talk, BIM Strategy Using Machine Learning. This bite-sized learning is just an attempt to give you a world that's already happening or you might see it very soon. So machines, bots, you name it, artificial intelligence, not just on proposal automation, but also on capture automation and every other intelligence tool that we need to do to win our bid. So if you have any questions on this topic or any other related topic, you could contact me at pasca at pachu.com. Until then, look after yourself, stay healthy and enjoy the rest of the APMP Winning Business Virtual Experience. Stay healthy. Take care. Bye -bye. Hi, my name is Kai. I enjoyed recording my father's video. Now, I'm going to be signing off.